In this video, I'm going to tell you 17 essential tips for brand new players to Marvel Snap. The music's pumping, the music's moving, I'm feeling good, you're feeling good. Let's talk about these 17 fantastic tips right now. Let's go! Tip number one, there's hot locations. And basically the way this works is that on Sundays and whenever there's a new location released, you basically see that location that's basically in the main window here about half the time in your games. The advantage to this is that you can tailor your decks around these locations so that you can take advantage of them and basically get some cubes. The other side to it is if you hate these locations, you can get Scarlet Witch, Rhino, or any other uh, location correction card to get rid of them so you just don't have to deal with it. That's what I do most of the time. Tip number two is to upgrade your common cards first. Basically what you'll notice is that each card has a border. The border is colored. And the way it works is that the colored border indicates the rarity of the card. Blue cards are rare and can be upgraded to epic which become purple. The advantage of having these gray cards is that these gray cards are your common cards and upgrading them by their collection level costs half of what it does for any other card. So for instance, getting this Captain America with a gray kind of common background to an uncommon costs 25 credits for one collection level. Whereas if we find a green one here, the green core here, if to get two collection level, we have to pay 100 or 50 credits each. Therefore, it's much more um, kind of, uh, it's, it's much more valuable and way more efficient on your credits to upgrade all these gray cards first in order to progress your collection level early on in the game. Tip number three is to make a garbage tier deck simply for upgrading your cards. If you're a brand new player and you want to progress your collection system as fast as possible so you can unlock as many cards as you can so you can make those decks that I'm featuring pretty much every single day, what you want to do is you want to make a, a deck list of just all your gray common cards. The reason for this is because the way that Marvel Snap works is you only get boosters to upgrade the cards that are in the deck that you're playing. Well, if you have a full deck of just gray cards, you're going to unlock those boosters as you play and you're able to upgrade these cards from common to uncommon for the cheapest possible credits, which is exactly what you want. And this represents 12 collection level for basically half the cost. You want to do it. Who cares if you lose a few games? Yes, the deck sucks, but what you want to do is unlock more cards and that is exactly how you do it. Tip number four is that cards unlock in collection pools and this is something a lot of new players don't even realize. Basically the way it works is that as you progress your collection system, you unlock cards that are completely random. However, they're randomized within specific pools to guarantee that you unlock certain cards by a specific time. For instance, image beside me, you'll see the collection pool number one, which is where most of you are going to be if you're watching this video. Essentially, the way it works is that through collection level zero all the way to 214, you'll be unlocking cards randomly, but it's guaranteed to be from this pool. And once you hit collection level 214, you are guaranteed to have every single card that's imaged here. From there, you move on to collection pool two, where you unlock those cards. And then once you hit that threshold, you start unlocking cards for collection pool number three and above. This is something that uh, kind of allows you to ensure that you can have very consistent unlocks at certain stages of your Marvel Snap career. Yes, it's randomized while you're in the pool, but overall, you can start to see how you can get consistent unlocks when you hit specific uh, thresholds with your collection level track. Tip number five is that upgrading cards all the way to infinite is often a preferred way to unlock a little more extra value in your collection score. The reason for this is because once you get a card to infinite, not only have you basically run up your collection score along the way, but you basically get an infinity split. What that basically means is that you can see here, I can't actually upgrade this card anymore. It's at max quality, but don't worry, you can still play that card because you make a variant of it that has a type of effect on it. This one has some shiny background, pretty cool. But the advantage is you get to re kind of uh, upgrade this card again while unlocking additional variants along the way. This is pretty cool because basically you get that common to uncommon discounted uh, upgrade that we are so sought after because you, you basically pay half the price for the collection level, which is exactly what you want to do. If you're a new player, you want to upgrade these cards. You want to be getting your collection level higher so you can unlock more cards so you can get to the next pools like we discussed in the previous tip. Tip number six is to build balanced decks. What this essentially means is you start to have to understand how Marvel Snap works. You have 12 cards in your deck and you start with a few in your hand and you draw one every turn. Okay, what's that actually mean? What that means is that realistically you can actually pull off mo most decks with only one six drop and maybe two five drops if you have a little bit of, you know, options on turn five. But realistically what you really want to do in order to tempo and curve out properly, curve meaning that you play your cards with the available energy that you have, maximize the amount of energy per turn, is you want to have a little more one drops, some two drops, a few three drops, a couple of four drops, one or two uh, five drops, and only one six drop. This allows you to have a very steady curve. 
it's a balanced deck. Now, there are some decks that break these rules, and we'll talk about them when I make additional deck guides in Pool 3, but essentially, the key thing you want to understand is you don't want to just up, like, front load all your cards with just ones. You don't want to make all your cards six, because then you can't play anything during the game anyway. What you want to do is have a balanced deck that essentially allows you to play on turn one, two, three, four, and five, and finally having a nice combo card on six to finish it off with a cherry on top. But it's also very important to understand is that you are drawing cards all throughout the game, so you become more likely to draw your four, fives, and sixes as the game progresses. Whereas with the ones, twos, and threes, you want to have them up front. So therefore, it's often more advantageous to have a little more of the one, twos, and threes, specifically the ones and twos up front, if you want to have a deck that curves out properly. Tip number seven is that you can actually sort your collection. A lot of people don't realize this. You can sort by energy, you can sort by power, you can sort by the recent cards that you unlocked, you can actually even sort by the quality of what you've unlocked. Look, all the great cards. Look, these are all the common cards I need to upgrade. Beautiful. We just talked about that in a previous tip. You can also actually sort by the common abilities. I want just ongoing cards. Cool. Let's see all the ongoing cards I have. I want cards that, uh, you know, are just destroy-based cards. Here they are. Perfect. I want to see cards that I don't own that are also destroy-based cards. Well, I don't have Galactus yet, and he destroys the entire the entire game, basically. Hey, I don't have him. Got to unlock him. Can't unlock him yet, but I don't own him yet. Whatever. At the long story short is that you can see that you have a lot of filtering options that really make kind of organizing your information much easier, especially when you're starting to deck build. Because deck building is one of the most important skills that you can build as a Marvel Snap player. Tip number eight is to customize your decks. I can't believe how many players forget to do this. If you hit this little button up here, you can actually click this and you can change your card back to any ones you've unlocked at this point in time. Uh, you can actually change the name of your deck as well. Change it to whatever you want. This is my beginner deck move deck. I'll uh, give you the link up above if you're interested in watching it. But regardless, you can make some customizations to your deck. And also, if you click on any one of them here, on any one of the cards, I should say, you can actually pick which variants you're utilizing. So you can actually, you know, create some spice in your individual deck building, right? So if you want a specific type of variant in here, you can actually select it, swap in the variant, and you can customize the look feel, and the general name of your decks. Do it. It's a lot of fun. Tip number nine is don't waste your gold. As you can see, I have about 11,000 gold. Uh, I don't like to spend it, but I like to collect it. And I just don't want to spend any on it. Listen, you can buy variants if you want. God bless. Support the team. Do it, right? I spend some money here and there as well. But realistically, do not just straight up waste your gold because it's extremely valuable. And we don't know what's coming in the future where gold's going to be kind of like a major thing. Maybe there's going to be a new event that requires gold. But if you're looking for the most important way to use your gold, what you want to do is use it on these rerolls. Currently, the most optimal way to use gold is to reroll your missions and to ensure that essentially you are getting the most value for your gold. What you do is you click here, you refill your missions, and you get two more. Look, we'll do it right now. We're going to buy some more missions here. We get some more. Perfect. And essentially the way it works is you get one hard and one common mission. And it's also important to remember that you want to make sure that you never, ever, ever leave the missions full. You always want them at four of six whenever there's a refill happening. So in 15 minutes from now, I'm going to get two more missions. I don't want five of six. I want four of six to make sure that I get those missions topped off. Why? That's a lot of credits on the board here. Every single refill is basically worth 150 credits. That's an upgrade, and you want more credits, you can upgrade more cards, and you can get your collection score higher. You want to take advantage of these credits and always have your missions topped off. Tip number 11 is that you actually progress your season pass even without the missions. Yes, you get some additional bonus uh, points for your missions, and that's fantastic, but just by playing the game, you actually get season pass uh, points as well. For instance, every single location that you win, you get 10 points, and every time you do a turn, any completed turn, I should say, gives you an additional point as well. So you can get up to 36, 37 points a game. That ain't bad. A mission's often 50, so why the heck not? Moreover, even on the free track, once you get to collection level 51, you unlock free rewards in these season caches. Let's take a look. You open a season cache, you get additional credits, you get additional gold, you can get variants and all other uh, boosters and types of rewards. So it actually really benefits you to continuously play and uh, unlock these kind of track rewards because you still continue to unlock rewards and build up your collection with the gold and with the credits that you get from these season caches. Again, you get points just for playing. Tip number 12 is that retreating isn't losing. As you can see right here, this might be one of those situations that as a new player might be hard to kind of decipher. Am I winning? Am I losing? Well, I got a little bit of pressure on Luke's bar, which ain't bad, but realistically, I know this guy's going to hit me with a big combo. He's been building up the Devil Dinosaur to drop on me here. He's winning this location. I will not be able to contest this location. If I follow through here, I just basically lose my cubes. If he snaps, it's even worse. So retreating is not a loss. Clicking this button and retreating from a match is essentially living to fight another day. Don't treat it like a loss because it's not losing.
amazing. In fact, you're making a very good conscious decision to save your cubes. You can also use the retreat later and uh, set up a tie if they happen to retreat as well, if you think that they might be unsure as well. But regardless, retreating is never losing. You're actually just conserving your cubes for another day. And tip number 13 is that snapping is by far the most important skill that you can develop as a Marvel Snap player. Determining when to snap and when to retreat is the most important thing that you can do. For instance, right here, I determined that with Luke's bar, I got a huge advantage. I snap, I put the pressure on the opponent, I force the retreat, I secure the win. It's so important to learn to understand when your snapping opportunities are, because that's the key to success in Marvel Snap. Tip number 14 is that there is an undo button. I don't think a lot of people know that. So essentially the way it works here is imagine you play your cards. A lot of people are used to saying, okay, I changed my mind. Oh, oh I can't pull him back. I got to put it back in the reverse order there. But let's say you play lots of cards and you can't remember the order which you played. You can actually click your energy icon and there's an undo all actions button that'll completely reset your entire hand so then you can kind of redo your turn as you would have wanted. Absolutely fantastic and exactly what you want to do. And tip number 15 is that the actual name highlighted board tells you whose cards reveal first as you'll notice that mr frosty over here his name is highlighted here and that means that his cards will reveal first the manner by which this is determined is by whoever is actually winning the given uh you know um the game at the current state of time and what you'll see here is that the turn initiative actually made a major play here what happened was is because he has turn initiative he played cosmo first this is a perfect example because he played cosmo first and he had turn initiative that meant that his cosmo revealed first that means that my Iceman revealed second. And the result of that is that uh, Cosmo prevents on reveals from happening at a given location. Iceman fell on top after the Cosmo was revealed, so never actually did his on reveal, and it was essentially useless. He just went down as a 1-2 and didn't actually have an impact on the board. So that was a perfect example of how turn initiative can be utilized in Marvel Snap. And again, it's set by whoever's winning the board state at the given time. Tip number 16 is to try to focus on winning two of the three lanes. A lot of new players, they try to focus a lot of their energy on winning three lanes, which is kind of awkward because I know we talk about a lot of the zoo decks where you try and contest three lanes, but realistically, especially as you start to gain rank and move up the collection track, you're gonna wanna focus on two of the three lanes in order to secure your victories. That's what you need to win in Marvel Snap, so that's where your focus should be. Don't overcommit to three separate lanes. And tip number 17, is to watch this next video because if you're new to Marvel Snap you probably have a ton of questions and this video is going to help you out in a tremendous way it's one of my most popular videos and you know what guys as a bonus tip don't forget to have fun because we're playing an absolutely remarkable game thanks for watching and we'll see you in that next Marvel Snap video